So what do you think of the spot? Oh, uh, yeah. It looks a little different since when I was living in it. <laughs> yeah, it's way different. God damn. Wow. A lot has changed. This is trippy. Damn, look at you, dude. <sighs> yeah. Do you get any more tattoos since I last seen you? A few, yeah. Fuck. The ones on the neck. Yeah. You know what I feel like's really changed? The most just if I just look at you, um, besides the tattoos, yeah. it's your swag. Ooh. Like you got more swag overall. Like you got the whole the jewelry, the yeah, and the rings and shit now. Just coming to my own, you know? Yeah. A couple of years. Now uh now we've been doing the internet for a million years. Yeah, honestly it is a million years. With yeah. the you know, the exchange rate, twelve years in the internet is a million years in real time. I think so. Yeah. Um so I mean, shit, I don't, how do I get into this? Um, for people who don't know who this is, uh, my audience, if you've been tried and true for me for years, you're going to know exactly who it is. If you're new, um, then uh, essentially most people know you as a professor, obviously, know you as Dom or Zeddy. Uh, but Mike Tornabene, obviously a crazy uh, talent, I'd say, in the, in the internet space. And not just the comedy space, um, I guess specifically on the internet for years. A lot has changed. Yeah, a lot has changed. He, just you guys, I don't know if you guys know or not. He and I used to make content all the time together. Um, we made, I don't know how many videos. I mean, we made a, a bunch on like together on my channel, on yours, and then and then Bros Verse, Bros Verse, which I don't remember yeah. how many videos we had on there, but a ton, man. I just remember. Yeah. I mean, it was funny because the other day, Larry Wheels came up to me and was like, "Yo, I want to go do this like." Uh, um, salmon ladder thing and he was suggesting some gym and I was like oh that's crazy I was like you should try this gym <laughs> and I referenced where we did the yep. Ninja Warrior thing yep. um, I guess I mean shit man I guess we got to get right into it what uh, what happened with us because because they're gonna be like yo yeah, fuck, what happened why the fuck are they not what, what happened with bros verse exactly because um, yeah, I know they're yeah. asking it in their mind yeah. they're listening to so like address it motherfucker um, why don't you take the, the lead on this one I mean, bro, I got, I just got caught up in shit. I got caught up in my own shit. I got caught up in life shit. And just where my emphasis or my focus was at the time, which is completely not, not in where it needed to be to make that content continue to work for us. You know? Yeah. I mean, I talked to you about it a little bit off camera, but yeah. yeah, genuinely speaking, man, it wasn't just content and, you know, there was obviously like other content I was making, but there was just so much, I think in my life in general that I, I was just like sorting out that you know, even to this day, I continue to kind of sort out, yeah. but I've got a much better handle on it now. It's part of the reason why, I, you know, I reached back out to you to, to, uh, to, I asked you actually, I think, I don't know, months ago, I was like, come on the podcast. And then obviously at that point we hadn't like talked. So it was kind of like probably just dropped, but yeah, it's, it's, it, we did have a conversation for some time. Uh, like, I don't know, two weeks ago now. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. But a ton has changed in my life personally. And I, and I think, um, yeah, I just, I mean, just genuinely speaking, man, I, 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 I haven't made always the right choices in my life for a lot of things, not just like friendship stuff, business stuff. There's a lot of things that I've made mistakes on. And, um, yeah, just being honest about that. I, you know, you were one of the people that, uh, as far as content went, it was always super easy and seamless to make content together. We just had that vibe. It was always easy. And uh, as a friend, you're a great friend, and uh, I kind of flopped that a little bit, and you know, straight up, just I apologize. So I, I want to say that, that on the man. internet, and Damn. yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I yeah. know it's like, you know, we both had our have priorities going into Bros Verse. You know, we have our our main things, where we want to go, our livelihood, you know, stuff that we have to take seriously. And it's like when you combine two things, it's always going to be hard for us to like find that that yeah. balance. But yeah, man, I was like, I. <laughs> I loved bros verse, man. It was my favorite thing to do yeah. comedy wise. Like it was, we had a lot of fun and yeah. I was like really committed to it. So I was like, that's why I moved into this pool house. I was like, I don't really need to be moving into like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, a content house at like 30 something plus <laughs> 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 living yeah. in literally this room. Yeah. Like this was my, this was my house. I yeah, lived yeah. in this pool house, but I was like really down for it. I was excited to see where it went. And obviously, as you said, you know, you kind of like had a, a separate focus and for a time that was, you know, hard cause I was like super committed to doing it. Like I was like really excited about where yeah. it could go. Um, but beyond that, I felt like, you know, it did impact our friendship and that, that yeah. was for me the hardest part was like, dude, like we were so close for like six years and I liked working with you cause we had a good time. You know, yeah, it was yeah. never like an exchange of anything. There was never any, like, I didn't want or need anything from you. It was just like, this is my boy and we make cool shit. Yeah. And so, you know, it's been a minute, but like, I'm glad we were able to like talk yeah. about that. And I really yeah. appreciate it, man. And yeah. you know, it's, 
That's good. I'm trying to change my life on a lot of levels, man. I like um, it. A lot of levels. And I think I remember around this time too, the thing that was, I think most frustrating, I think just external outside of obviously the relationship aspect of yeah. it was YouTube itself just became like a completely different platform where it was like really penalizing the kind of content that, you know, we would make, which was just very kind of crude and raw and just like, yeah. you know, really unkept and swearing. And they really did start to penalize that content. And I think it was around the same time you really were trying to push it. And it was just like, it was just getting f***ed, it felt like. I think the, the hardest part from the beginning of Bros Verse was how are we going to monetize it, right? Like yeah. it made sense f from like a content standpoint, like us joining together, but having like two separate brands and like it was always demonetized. Like my Dom is Eddie stuff, my bro, my bro sign stuff like still can get demonetized, but a lot of times like it won't, which is like, I don't know why. Like if one's bad, they're all bad. They're all the same. Yeah. But Bros Verse would like consistently get demonetized. Like, we weren't earning anything on that. Yeah. So it's like hard for us to justify like, yo, let's put all of our eggs in this basket in our time when like we can make it elsewhere. So YouTube was like really fucking us with that. Yeah. But like it had such a reach and an organic following that like, yeah, it like it went beyond the algorithm. And like that's always been like my thing is like there's organic algorithm of what people like, which like you don't need to just like chase what the computer wants you to do. It's like people are going to watch this shit and, and love it and it's going to get views because it's great. So we were like knew we had something there, but we were struggling to figure out how to make it monetize and make sense. Yeah. And I think that you know became really difficult for us to like find that balance. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, I mean, the cool thing about it though, I think it spawned into some some other great stuff. I know for you specifically, um, the Shell Corp stuff. We 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 started with like that brand it was called Dual at the time. Yep. And then some of those um, um, designs and stuff which you created like inspired and then kind of became a part of what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, it's, I mean, is that, are those pants from it too? Yeah, these pants are dropping on the 15th on Wednesday. I'm not sure when this is coming out, but yeah, these are a new drop and so is the shirt, yeah. Yeah, it's fire. It's, it's, it's cool because like you're, to me and from our past and the content we've made forever is you're like a total gym bro, but it's actually really interesting for me to see this knowing you as a person, mm -hmm. not just as like Dom Mazzetti, the character, or like Mike Tornabeni, a gym bro guy who does actually work out despite the fact that like, you know, he joked this character, like Dom is this character, like you're actually a real gym bro in real life. Yeah. And then to see the sort of like products that you've created over the years of you doing this are, it's so funny cause they're, they're not so fitness specific, mm -hmm. but they're very so much you. Like if, if someone didn't know you, like you're, cause this is funny. I don't think people really understand this about you unless they've like listened to like you speak or talk about the kind of content that you've made. You've been very like critical because I've seen you work. I've seen you make content. I've seen you create content. And it's not like me. Like I'll show up and I'll be like, this shit's funny. This shit's relatable. Like, fuck it. Just do it. You, you'll start from like what's funny, what's relatable. And you'll like dissect it to like this crazy degree and like write, like really write and think. And like you do, you do so much to it, which makes sense now when I look at your brand that you have now, you spend, you can tell you spend so much time to make it just right. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like, just to make some shit, yeah, yeah. which is funny. Cause I don't think like from the outside looking in, people would know most, most people I would say would know you as Don Mazzetti. Obviously mm -hmm. a lot more people now know you as Mike Tornabene, yeah. which is who you are, mm -hmm. but you as a human, you're so creative. You're so artistic. You're so like, uh, like, uh, thoughtful and like specific about what you do. And, and like, so detail oriented that it's just funny how like your character for so many years has been this like crude slapstick humor, but your personality behind it the whole time has been that person. And you actually, I don't think people really get this, but you spend, you would spend so much time. I remember seeing you writing down like how you wanted these like bro science skits and things to go once you started really getting into that stride. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I remember watching as a YouTuber who making content at the same time, obviously never that specific comedy genre. I was just like fucking around. And I was like, holy shit, this guy's like super like about it. Yeah, man. And, and it makes sense. It makes sense why the thing you have now is, is very specific and it's very different. It's very unique. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just want to give you praise and congrats on that. And in regards to all of that, right, as a human, I just want to talk a little bit about this. I guess over all these years of you making content and you like creating and like trying to create at this like this high degree on a platform that is so like fickle and up and down and, and like, you know, demanding at the same time. Obviously, you had that joke running forever, which is like. <laughs> 
you know, I make content and post every once in a while, like yeah, new videos, week, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is funny, man. It's like, but it's like, I guess as a human, having the personality that you have that I know, obviously a little more detail than everyone else. And I kind of shared a little bit about it now, but having that personality, like detail oriented and then like living in a place of social media where it's just like, it seems like someone can make like to what looks like the dumbest piece of content ever. And it just like super excels and, yeah. and then to be like the person who like makes that content so like really thoughtfully artfully together and then it maybe doesn't do as well because it's just not it's not catching the algorithm the same way or the platform the same way yeah what does that do to you as a creator uh it crushes your soul just a little <laughs> yeah. bit you know over time i mean like it's especially apparent now with tiktok right like it's a platform that's a platform that rewards you for stealing shit yeah. It's built to like just keep copying and repeating and it's just like people literally take my bits and just put them on their thing. I've seen Don't it. tag me. Pretty funny. And it's like, oh, now, now I have a famous platform. I'm a famous person because I just, and that's okay. Like that's what, you know, the platform promotes. Um, but yeah, like I, you know, first off, thank you for, you know, those kind words and the yeah, praise. Absolutely. And it's, it's really cool to see when people it's cool to hear when people see what goes into what I do. Cause oftentimes you just see the end product and like, you know, I, I put my all into everything I do. Like it yeah. needs to be, I need to really believe in what I put out there, which is why I don't put out so many bro science videos. Like it takes a long time to make them. And I joke that it's like, oh, every week and it's, I'm inconsistent, but I, I put, I pour my heart into writing these things. Like I, everything I do, it's like, I need to make sure it's the best it can be. And that's like the way I've gotten around the algorithm, the consistency, like it's good. So it's going to go somewhere. And like, it's harder now if it were like to get it off the ground, maybe. Yeah. Like I've had it established, but I truly believe in that. Like to some degree, like you can't fully fight the algorithm and it gets really frustrating. Like I've made stuff on, uh, I guess like my smaller platforms, which would be my personal Instagram, which are super important to my brand. Cause that's where I make my advertisements and we put a yeah. lot of effort into them. They're basically short films. And when they hit, they're so important to the drop doing well and the brand getting eyes and like just all over. And it just feels great because I, you know, put a lot of energy into it. But some days you just, the algorithm doesn't hit it and it just tanks. And you're like, dude, I just spent money, time, effort into like yeah. this piece. And with Instagram, like it disappears in a couple of days, basically. It's no longer on feeds. YouTube lasts a little bit longer. So it's, you know, not, not as bad. Like you have some, your, your feels like your work lasts longer. Yeah. Um, so it can get really frustrating where you're like, yeah, I, it could have been just some like garbage that I ripped off from somebody else and it could have done like 10 times better, but I'm not going to do that. Like no matter, no matter what, like I'm not going to sacrifice the principles and which got me here. Like I'll have to, make some changes as to like how I get my stuff out there and like adapt yeah. just like with everything. But the one thing I'm not going to do is like is spend less time making it good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's your personality. Um, so on a personal level, like in relationship to like you as a human and doing this kind of work and being in this space for so many years, cause man, I mean, you're, you're one of the original, I would say fitness creators, uh, albeit comedy, but on, on the platform in general, you're one of the first creators. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I don't know how many people came after, but there's not many people who have been doing it for this long, um, like at all. So as like a person, I guess, what, what would you say, what, what has all this taught you about yourself and about other people? Like, what would you say, like the main things you've learned about you as an individual and like people along the way? I mean, I, it's been 12 years and I've learned a lot. Like those 12 years, it's, those are not only like extremely formative years in your life, no matter what you're doing. Like I started, I mean, I, I was, I was trying to, you know, write comedy and do all this stuff since I was in, in college, but my first viral video was 2010. I had just graduated like six months after. So like my life has changed dramatically from that point to, to now. Yeah. And the entire time I'm like living on the internet. So, and on top of that, living in the shadow of my own creation, so which crazy. is like, you know, what for a long time, people didn't even know my real name. Like I didn't have a personal Instagram. Like I didn't, nobody knew for probably, probably seven years. If people I, thought you were that guy. Yeah, they didn't even know my real name. Thought like, you were Dom as Yeah, I think 2014, no, 2015 was when like, I actually started doing my own stuff outside of it. So that was, yeah, that, so yeah, it was five years. I feel years. like that was around yeah. the time you started filming with me. Yeah, right around then, yeah. 
because I had met you like shortly after I came came out to to LA. So I had I had already had. I had my Damazetti verse channel for two years, which was my first success in YouTube. And then I had been doing bro science at that point for about three years. And then I met you at, at Gold's. Yeah. yeah. And so I'd like, people didn't really know who I was. And I was just like, just this character. And over time, it started to become like an identity crisis. And that was like 2015, 16 for me of like, yo, who am I? And it's yeah. this weird thing where like, now I don't separate it. Like, I, I obviously it's a different persona and a character, but like those are still my thoughts, my jokes, my creation. Like it's still me. But before I almost saw it as like it was like competing with my my real personality. Like my value was only in Don Mazzetti and yeah. people like I was afraid people would find me not interesting out of character. And so it sent me on this journey of like, who am I and what is my value outside of this this thing I've created? Now I don't need like I said, I don't need to separate them as much, but the good part in that is like, I sort of forced myself out of my comfort zone and did new things like my RPM channel, the car stuff, yeah. like really, I didn't want to just be this character forever. And I wanted to like explore more parts of my personality. When did you start to realize that you were like becoming like, I guess it made it maybe around the same time of like the, the identity crisis in and of itself. But prior, I'm assuming there was a point prior to that where you started to notice that like you were just being classified as this character like because you because it was the character that, yeah. that was your outward reflection on the internet when were you like wait a minute this is going in the wrong direction or not even necessarily the wrong direction just like where you didn't really want it to be because for you to come to the point where you go wait now wait who am i in relationship to this yeah that means at some point you were like wait how is this getting far away from me like the yeah like was it did that happen prior to coming to la uh no i i think like it it was a timing thing about like how many years i've been doing it and then partly I, I wanted to share more about what went into the videos. Like I wanted people to see the writing behind it, the thought process, like just more insight to it. And then there was this time when there was this like AOL documentary that they wanted to shoot on, on me and Gion, who, um, for oh, yeah, those who don't that. know Gion was like, you yeah, know, my business partner for a while. We, we wrote together, we created together. Um, you know, we're still cool. We don't work together anymore, but we're still boys. A lot of yeah. people ask, um, but they wanted to like shoot like a behind the scenes thing. I was like, oh, this would be cool. Like I want people to see the whole thing behind it. I, Cause it, for a lot of people, it's just made, it's like, it's good comedy. They love it, but it's like silly gym stuff. And like, I wanted them to see really like inside the workings of it. Like we're writers, like I, I'm a writer. That's what I started doing. And I wanted people to like get a little taste. Of it. I was like, oh, this would be a cool idea to kind of like let people in a little bit. And I absolutely hated the way they made it. They like they made it in a way that was all about how different I was from my character. And yes, like there is a stark difference if you meet me. Like you're like, oh wow, this guy's way different. But like, yeah, you're not yelling. Yeah, voices, and it's like, yeah. but if you produce it in such a way that the only storyline is like, look how different Dom is from his character, it's gonna like that's gonna be the story. And I was like really disappointed. I was like, this isn't the story I wanted to tell. And I was like, fuck, like now this is out here and people, this is the first taste people are getting of me out of character. And it has nothing to do with like how I wanted to be represented. It's how not did like, you want it to go? I wanted them to show the writing. I wanted them to show the creative process. And instead they like, it was like this fake reality setup where like they had us go to like me and Gian go to like uh, this lunch place that we've never been to in our entire life. And like, talk about some stuff, talk about like dating. And we're like, this isn't what we do, man. Like, we're, we're like, well, this isn't right. <laughs> what like, the fuck? And we were just like, right, okay. Like, you know, kind of naive. Um, really, I just wanted fucking them to AOL, see. AOL, dude. Yeah, right? Where are they now? Yeah, fuck them, dude. <laughs> yeah, they come, suck, Come on, clearly. AOL. Yeah, it really losers. went well for you. So, yeah, I, I wanted them to just kind of see the, the process of like making a bro science video because I thought that would be valuable to people, interesting, and also like, you know, rewarding for me. Yeah. And it wasn't. But the good thing about it was, People were like, oh, dude, this guy's so lame in real life. He's so boring. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, this is my nightmare. This is my absolute fucking nightmare. But it that's what forced me to be like, you know what? If someone's going to show who I am, it's going to be me. Yeah. And I was like, I, I, I'm i terrified to do it, like to start my own channel, to put myself out there because people love the character. They love the channel. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. would be like, it's like finding out Santa Claus isn't real. And yeah. I'm like, you know what that does to your psyche as like a fucking young 20 year old? You're like, it's pretty damn. Crazy. Uh, so people think I suck. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, that's trash. And like, it's one thing when you're playing a character, like I could take people not liking it because there's a buffer between my real self and you know their, their criticisms. Cause it's a like character. It's like, yeah. ah, it's, I'm playing a character. I'm joking, you don't get it, you don't get it, whatever. 
But when it's you, there's nothing there. You're just like, they just don't like me. They had to be a real YouTuber. Yeah. And I, (laughs) weird career choice for me. I don't like opening myself up to judgment. I mean, nobody does. But a lot of people are better at it than me. Like you being one of them. You're just like, fuck it. This is who I am. I'm doing it. Yeah, I don't care anymore. I've never been good at that. I'm still not. I'm getting better. But it forced me to be like, look, I got to get out of this comfort zone. And I have to do it myself. Why do you think you're not comfortable with that? I don't know, childhood trauma? Yeah, but we all got that shit. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, of course. That's why, yes. though. You can hit me with a bill yeah. now? Like, yeah. What do you say? Yeah, 300 bucks an hour. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what But it's what trauma, though? Like, what trauma make you feel that way? I guess you just being criticized, you know, as a, as a kid. Like, perfectionism, you know? Yeah. And From, like, like, parents and shit? Yeah, or? yeah. Your dad, your dad's not like that. Oh, my dad's... Look, I'm not shit talking about that. I love my dad. He's a great dude. He's a reason I'm, like person i am like yeah. creatively but yeah like his his criticisms and his perfectionism and it's like he means well like he just wants he like sees he sees where it's going he sees the playbook and he wants to really help you get there terrible at the execution yeah, yeah. and he's so he's really nice to me man he'll slide in my stories oh, and be yeah. like you're doing great no he's 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 a, a wonderful man like yeah. he's nothing but good intentions but like it's just like he's got this laser focus on like I know what's right for the situation and the thing is he is right but it's not the way to like some delivery yeah and it's like I've had to learn that myself about I'm similar like I have to just be like I want to help people I want to you know get things done right and I want to insert myself into it and sometimes the best thing to do is just back up bro you know and that's fuck fucking you hard me, dude but so that, you know, that a lot of criticism and a lot of like perfectionism and just not wanting to make mistakes and just being like trying yeah. to be perfect. And that, I guess, when you become an adult then you start to put those pieces together. Yeah. And it yeah. slows you down, though, man. It does. That just slows you yeah. way down. It does. That's the fucking yeah. thing about it. Because then I that's are situations I've realized, like if I think about my my business growth or acceleration, it was like every chance I was able to kind of like let go a little bit of it needing to be perfect for you to just to get done outside of me having to do everything. Yeah. I saw the most benefit. And that's where I'm at right now. Like that's yeah. what I'm trying to do where it's like, I understand that I will not sacrifice on my principles of like it needing to be a certain way, but I can, it doesn't need to be a hundred percent perfect. Yeah. Like my perfectionism isn't always, it's like, it's probably perfect already. Like just let up some control, let some people in that you trust to like operate this and help you with it. And you know, it can all come together just right. Yeah. Is it is it the fear of it just like, like what's the what's your biggest fear? Is it like just losing everything? That yeah, that's one of them. I mean, like when you when you work for yourself and you have such a because I think we've talked about this yeah, part before, yeah, like such a volatile career where it's like you are you're holding on to something completely <laughs> fragile. nebulous and fragile, and you're yeah. like it, it's it's fame, it's it's a uh, um just like relevance yeah and everything you do is tied to that like you're keeping people's attentions for so long and you're you have businesses related to it and like when you lose that your money starts to go down and then like your the life you built everything you've created is like it feels like the rug can get pulled out from under you at any moment and like that's definitely a big fear because the rug has been pulled out from under me (laughs) many times and i'm just like fuck here we go again but that's like that's like life though no yeah like that's the thing i think i i think i don't think a lot of people recognize that with social media in general like because everyone it's not the most popular this is now the most popular fucking thing that people want to do in the world they want to do social media they mm-hmm. want to do something like this yeah podcasts whatever this or that like youtube shit and i don't think people realize that it there it, it does feel like that super fragile even for people like me and you've been doing this forever yeah it still feels at that fragile like nature but what have you done that's made you more comfortable with that like because you just continue to go right i just continue yeah. to go no matter what but what have you done that's made you like more accepting of it uh leaning more into myself and the things that I want to evolve, put out into the world, share. Like if I only had bro science and Damazetti, like I would feel really scared. I'd, I'd feel like unfulfilled. I like, I know I can't do it forever. I know I don't want to do it forever. Yeah. And I'd be like, yo, at some point, like my time is up and I got nothing else. So adding things to, you know, my, my career and my professional side is one thing, but it also was adding to me personally. Like I'm adding things that I see as like my own self value and, 
you know, the, the clothing brand and my, my style, like just getting back to doing things for me, like the tattoos, like I've wanted to get tattoos forever and I didn't because of the character. The character yeah. And I was like, you know what, I'm done doing that. I'm gonna start doing things for myself. And I was like, this is who I wanna be. And it's time I start, you know, pulling the trigger on it. And then those things have gotten me more comfortable with just this space I'm in where it's like, it feels like it can get taken away. Um, Cause the more you have, the less pressure each little thing has, where it's like, I can take a step away from bro science and invest more here. And I, and it just, it feels a little bit more at home. Like instead of just, I landed here and I, I hope I can stay. Hope you, know? you can figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Fuck man, the internet is such a trip. Yeah. It's just so crazy. Cause like, this is, I feel like I can only have this conversation with people who've really done this for this many years. Mm -hmm. Cause people, most people would look at it. People look at it from the outside and be like, the fuck are these idiots talking about? Yeah. Right. It's like, you just film videos and shut the just fuck shut up, up right? man. It's like, yeah, fuck. It's it. a, it's a different ass life. And it's crazy. Cause it's so glorified now and everyone wants it. And it's just, mm -hmm. like, I, I just, I don't know. I just hope more people realize like, not that it's not worth it. Not that it's not, no, it's completely great. Fucking yeah. can be completely incredible. Um, there's just a lot more that comes with it that I don't think people understand, like on that, that mental health aspect of it, like that sanity, because I mean, how many times have you like, you know, you have to make a video. I mean, you even got to the point where you became a joke not to have videos, right? but like, you know, you have to, you have to perform. And this is the crazy thing about social media. That I don't think people really understand is that if you don't make the content and if it's not good enough, like eventually, like we were talking about the fragileness in it, like you're fucked. Yeah, you're gonna fizzle out. Gone. Yeah. And then there's gonna be 10 more people that are like just non at to take your spot. Yeah. So it's like the mental, ha the mental health aspect of like the relationship to like that constant, like, I don't know, it's not like predatory, but just like, <laughs> you're like trying to survive. Yeah, and it's I just mean, like this, you, you know. You sacrifice that security for the good parts about it. It's great, like I'm, we're, we're not complaining about no, what no, no, we no, do. No, like no, this no. is this is I love it. Like I am where I want to be. Like this is what I want to do. But it's like I I'm just giving perspective. Yeah. And like I I didn't from the beginning never wanted to be a YouTuber. I didn't even think it was a thing. This was 2010. Instagram wasn't invented. Yeah. Yeah. I was like I thought it was kind of like looked down upon to be a YouTuber. And I just kind of like found myself in this area. And you know you're not you're not really prepared for how like putting your entire life on the internet and that being like everything to you. Yeah. Like that, like you, most people can separate work and their personal life. Yeah. You can't in this. It's like you get, you put your, all of yourself out there and you ride those ups and downs. Like if you have a, you know, a down moment, like your money's going to take a hit and then your money takes a hit and then you start to feel pressure and that pressure affects relationships, your relationships and then, then your content. And then it just starts to snowball. And like, you don't, you don't really think about that stuff when you're just like, Oh, it's just fame and money and, and fun shit. Like, yeah, it is, but you know, you still have to deliver and you are just the only person in this enterprise, like really holding it all together. And like all of it falls on your shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's like the, 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 the more relaxed I've gotten over the years is like the more that I've involved more people and like really tried to incentivize people, the right people to like be a part of what I'm doing yeah. um, outside of just me making content, like the other businesses and things like that. Cause that's really the only way I think to, to truly like grow beyond, you know, these characters or this content pieces that people are all expecting from you. Yeah. Um, so I guess on that note, besides Shell Corp, um, what else are you working on? What other things do you work on? Uh, so I actually just have been working on, uh, I invested with this company that does protein gummies. So it's like gym candy, right? What is, yeah, let's see. Right oh, you have some shit. Gym this candy. Is, this the is, packaging. You know, it's just funny because it just reminds me of like one of your pre-workouts. Yeah, it is. The, because they got the, let me see this shit. Yeah, look at the, the bears. They're like jacks with tattoos on them. <laughs> And it's got like incredible macros on it and they're honestly delicious. Okay, like, well, so. Try that. Okay, I'm curious cause, okay, it says 100 calories, 18 grams of protein. Like where is the protein coming from? Four grams of net carbs? Gelatin. Gel now I'm not the guy, I'm not the scientist, okay? I'm just the guy that makes the packaging look cool and, and talks about it, but it's fucking delicious. Dude, I feel like it's gonna taste chalky. Mm, try it. Oh shit. <laughs> And the gummy bears are jacked too. Yeah, they're jacked. The actual gummy bears themselves are jacked. 
Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's actually really funny. Yeah. Damn, they're pretty good. Yeah. So, but... I don't know any science on this, but... I don't know how the fuck... Gelatin, though. I mean, it's not vegan-friendly. Because it, it comes from vegans. It comes from animals, yeah. It's not for vegans? No, it's, it says it on there. Sorry, guys. Yeah. But 18, yeah, gra- 18 grams of protein per bag, 22 grams of carbs, and one gram of fat. And it's like... Most gym candy kind of like... It's just candy. Yeah. yeah. Or, or it's just like, here's a serving size, and it's like four pieces, and you're like, yo, I, I need like 10 bags of this. Jack gummy bears. Yeah. <laughs> yo, I'm going to see which one I like the most. This shit's good, though, right? I'm liking the... Damn. Yeah, I got the, the website, so, gain, gaingummies.com. Gain gummies? Gain gummies, yeah. When did you start this? Uh, it hasn't launched yet, but it's about to. Um, some guys approached me a little while ago, showed me the product. They've been working on it, and I tried it, and I was like, "Dude, this is that's delicious." Pretty dope. Yeah, so I was like, I'm, "I'm, I'm in this." Like, that's something where it's like, I believe so much in like the product that I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm down for it." Like, let's do yeah, this. Yeah, lemonade is the best one. Yeah, lemonade 100%. is fire. Yeah, yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just so funny. The bears fucking got, know, tattoos, got the, on the tattoos on it. Um. So and then I know you did the, you had the game that you created. Oh, do you even lift? Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. You still do that? Uh, yeah, we still have, we still, still, still do it. I mean, it's, I think that's an example of something where like I was doing all, doing all this myself where like having a team and yeah. the right people to like really run these things as a brand versus just like offshoots of my content, like yeah. merchandise. Um, Cause like I made that whole thing myself. Like I wrote the game, I came up with the rules, like figured out how to produce it and, yeah. and it did well, but it was like, I don't have the time to just like run this like a separate entity and so it's like some of these things i I create just don't get the attention they need because it's all on me so based on that i I totally understand what you're saying what do you think what do you think you've been the best at like what do you think your real talent is uh besides writing obviously i think i know that in in the most broad sense yeah i know how to elicit certain emotions from just about anything like when it comes to comedy i know the words to put together, the way to arrange that sentence, the ideas to elicit laughter. When it comes to clothing, I know how to put an outfit together. I know how to like make the, the, the fit just so right that you feel cool, you feel comfortable, you feel like you're expressing a certain part of it. Like when it comes to uh, you know car stuff, I know how to express excitement, inspiration, adventure. Like I can see the pieces that go into something and be like, what's the feeling I wanna get out of this? And whatever that is, like, I, I know how to engineer that. So I think that's, like, really what my talent is. And, like, that is my creative ability is just, like, I know what I want something to feel like. It's just, like, this instinct that I have for, uh, I guess, emotion and, like, you know, how something feels when you watch it, put it on, do it, listen to it, whatever. Yeah. Where do you get that kind of shit, though, from? It's, like, is it you grow up thinking, like, <sighs> bro, I don't know. It's just because like, I understand what you're saying yeah. from knowing you, um, <clears throat> you know, even like I said earlier about like how you've written, you, you put so much into like writing the actual pieces for bro science. I remember watching or seeing some of the stuff and being like, you're doing all this to fucking make that. Yeah. But then it made sense. Cause it was, it was specific. Like if you're doing a bit about like CrossFit or something, for example, you think, okay, what's all the, what are all like the things that could be really funny around this? And you'd orchestrate this way to like present the joke, which was just you know, a normal person would just be like, CrossFit's fucking lame, and this right. is why, and you know, you know, whatever. Yeah, and you've always put more effort and energy into things. I guess, like, I'm curious, did did that start anywhere else in your life before it was showing up in content? Like, were you that kind of person? Like, were you that kind of kid growing up, or was it something you just learned over time, just from like realizing the things that you felt or the things that you liked in relationship to when you were putting clothes on or when you were doing something? And then you were like, oh, this. Like, were you realizing it and then being like? Oh, this is what I'm going to implement into the things that I'm doing. Uh, I've definitely just more recently like realized what it all means and like how to utilize it. But it's it, part of it has has been there since I was a kid. Like it's part of like my DNA, like yeah. the way I like see things and, and analyze them and then can kind of like produce them in a different way. Um, you know, I've, I was an artistic kid, like drawing, creating different things. I've always had that in me and like. I don't, I don't know where it comes from. Like, I, I think it's just like the instinct part. Like, I don't know where that comes from. It's just something I just know. It's like, I just trust my gut. I trust my vision and it just steers me in the right direction. But as far as how to use that to get 
to like actually build the thing that's in my head. It's just analyzing in a certain way where it's like, I take a bro science video and like you said, I don't, don't just go like, I'm going to make fun of this thing. I, I look at the layers of it. I'm like, why, what's funny here? What's going on? What's this trend? Okay. Why do people do this? Why do they behave this way? Why do I, when I go into the gym, I do this certain thing. Let me think about like the driving forces in like my psychology behind that as to like, what makes me want to do this? What's this coming from? Where is this feeling? Where is this, where are these actions living? And then you keep peeling back those layers and you find the relatable aspect to it that everyone goes, holy shit, I do that. And then you just re-engineer it into a joke and get back to where you started. And that way it's like, it's not just a surface level joke. Like you are really getting to the core of what makes it relatable and insightful. And then I just find the right words to deliver that through usually through metaphor um, and just word choice and, and sentence structure that gets the idea across in a way that is like really easily digestible where it's like you can laugh at it and not really understand all the layers of the joke. But if you really wanted to look at it, you can get it from top to bottom, like exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like I have this instinct for how it's going to come out and where it's going to go. And then in between that is just dissecting, analyzing, arranging, trial and error, scanning for so different things. This is not like a process that you like, you weren't obviously you, you weren't given this. You'd like, you understood this over time of you doing it. Cause like that whole process, yeah, there wasn't it, someone who was like, Hey, this is how you make a joke. No, I, that's the part that I learned over time and got better at. Like there's, there's the things that are like your gifts that, that I'm given that I don't know where they came from. And then there's honing those. And so when it comes to comedy or anything else I do, like I've, gotten better at understanding how it's done. So now I can replicate it. Like I have a formula for it. I understand what goes into it where before, you know, I still have that talent and that gift of like seeing these certain things and having this, this voice and creativity, but might not be able to really uh, put it together and, and deliver it in a package that, that is like it's best and most understandable delivery. Um, but now it's like having done it for so long, I, I know how it's done. Like I, 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 I can recreate it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, shit. Based on that formula, uh, you, did you see the thing? I don't know. I did recently, but you, I'm sure you've seen this happening on the internet. You had to, if you've been on any sort of like fitness, TikTok or Instagram on the internet and everyone started making their own versions of this, like reaction to the comedy where there was girls, there was girls on TikToks like reacting to people looking at them. Mm -hmm. You've seen this, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made one where I was like, I dumped water on my head and like, it looks like I'm sweating and the girl's right there next to me. Like she's filming a TikTok and I'm trying not to look. And it went, right. it did really well. Um, and then I'll see these other versions of it because like that was happening where like this girl really tried to like make something that was kind of, you know, innocent into like this big deal because she looked like she was trying to get views or whatever. Um, which obviously this does happen to women in general, sometimes where guys are maybe a little bit overbearing, but it's like, it, you know, it's one of those spaces where like, it may, it's probably going to happen because the gym and obviously you got to protect yourself in it. But, um, like a joke like that, if you saw something like that, how could you make, I'm surprised you haven't made a joke about that. Yeah. I mean, I just haven't made a bro science video in a while. So <laughs> that would be the one <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Like, um, so how would I make, how would I go about making a joke yeah, like that? So like, so, so let's use that for yeah, an example. Okay. So here's the really important thing. You're in a touchy subject where it's like, there's two sides to look at this. The, the women's side. Yeah. Yes. And this is all of why my stuff is successful and why I can make jokes that you can't make anymore. Right. Because I understand how to look at it from a 360 view from both sides. Right. The fact is like, there is, there is merit on, on either side, you know, from the women's perspective, there's looking at somebody working out who's like, you know, they're, they're dressed in, in a way where you're like, oh, you're going to get looks, you're going to get glances. And then there's staring, there's making people uncomfortable. Yeah. There's like, there is a clear line and a clear difference. And most women like understand that they're like, yeah. I don't mind getting looked at, but staring at me, hovering, being creepy is crossing the line for sure. And like understanding that part of it is your first step into like really getting into this joke. The other part is like the people on the other end who like, they want the attention, but then make a big deal about getting it. And it's just like, now you're like, look, you, you can't, you, you can't do, you can't like have both sides of it. And it's right. like, understand like what you're actually getting upset at. Like somebody just looking at you, like you're in a gym, you're in a public place, like a little glance here and there. Like you kind of want, like if someone really wants that attention and then they get it and then they make it a big thing, like what they wanted was even more attention from yeah, it. For sure. They wanted something to blow up into this thing or they wanted to like, 
feel more just more, I don't know, validation from it and being like, oh, you were really fucking creeping on me when maybe they were just glancing at you. Right. Right. Like when you go to the gym, like you kind of like when people look at your way, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Do you like when, they, when I got a pump. Right. Like, but do you yeah. like when they fucking stare at you? I like mean, they stare at me anyways, dude. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I mean, it's, I guess it's different. Like I'm a bad yeah, example. You're like a, you know, an internet celebrity. So they stare for different reasons. But like if somebody's like creeping and, and staring at you for too long, you're going to be like, oh, yo, what, what, what is this person doing? But you're also like, a man and big and right. you probably feel safe, right? Yeah, yeah. That's so the there's thing. all these things going into it. It's like what are we what are we looking at here? Now where are the jokes? Who am I making fun of is like really important. Because you have to understand like you can't make fun of women who feel unsafe that's because there good. is a, a key to it. So you have to be like, here are the the uh, the um, boundaries to that joke. Like this is not what I'm making fun of. So if I say certain things that start to feel like that, you have to r- like ring it back in and be like, this isn't the point of the joke and like hedge yourself from the joke being misinterpreted as like you are saying like it's women are overreacting to like anyone fucking making them feel uncomfortable. And they do the same on the other side where it's like, you can't just like alienate an entire side. Yeah. Or just, yeah, exactly. Or, or just be like, this is okay. And like, anytime a man looks your way, it's like that he's, he's the, the wrong guy. Like he, he's in the wrong for it. So you need to think about that too. And they're like, you're now How do you get to the middle. You make fun of both people. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you make fun of like the people that are doing the extreme, right? You make fun of the creepy guys who like, they are crossing the line. They are wrong. Like there, there's, there is in both these things, a clear right and wrong on both sides of it. And you want to make fun of those things. And most people like, I think they, they don't really want to see them, but they know, but if it's my job in comedy to like bring them to that, to get them to see a different point of view. Where like, if you're on this side of the argument or this side of the argument, I'm going to point out why these sides way on the end are, are both wrong. And you're going to be like, Oh, I'm seeing it from a different perspective. Now are you saying this is how we fix politics through comedy? <laughs> That's what it sounds like, dude. In a, in a way, it's just God. like, yeah, it's communicating an idea, right? Like, I know what I'm trying to say, and I know how to get that idea across. Now, if you give me some time to sit down and, like, really, like, work through what the message is I want to, I wanna, like, joke about, then I'll throw some jokes in there, and then you're going to be like, damn, this is funny, but I've also, like, now thought about something in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. So you think, I mean, that's, that's I feel like what comedy is, is to create conversation around, like, kind of uncomfortable things. Yeah. Like, that's what it was like... I feel like was originally created for pretty much like the point yeah. of it. I guess like, why do you think people have such a hard time now? Like just like, I don't know. Like we were joking the other, uh, not the other day. We were joking earlier today um, about like, we're at lunch we could, some shit you couldn't say some jokes right. you couldn't say like that are more sensitive. Um, why do you think it got to that, that way where it's like, there's just, we just know we can't say certain things. I think it's because we've also evolved to realize that we shouldn't. Like there are certain things where it's like, all right, like this was okay back at a certain point. Cause like it was just sort of the norm. And now you're like, all right, I understand that like people and things and ideas have evolved where you're like, okay, some of these things might actually like be harmful in a certain way, but like, you don't mean it that way, yeah. but it's kind of like a lot of things then get dragged down underneath it. So it's like, you got to evolve with the times, but it doesn't mean you can't joke about nothing. You just have to understand what it is you're saying, right? Like if you're saying something and the joke is like, it is like harmful or hurtful to somebody and offensive in a way that's like not productive to your comedy or to that person. It's like, what's the point? And it's a little more difficult now, but I said this before, I just feel like if you can't figure out how to make edgy jokes in this time, you're just not great at your job. Like there's, it's harder now, but that's comedy that's evolving with it like you have to do that you can't just be like ah man i can't say anything anymore because people don't find it funny it's like bro you're just describing not being funny man (laughs) yeah like you gotta try a little harder it does suck like it sucks that you can't like something's like oh that was funny but like i kind of get why you can't you know it's 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 just like but boo hoo like you're gonna cry about it like now you're sounding soft i can't say jokes like yeah you can just do better yeah just try a little harder and figure out like and i just believe like you can still say controversial stuff but know who you're making fun of like know what the message is and like really what the intent is behind it because i think a lot of people like they have some not great intent behind their jokes and that's where they get in in hot water where you're like yo you're not saying anything like profound let me run a joke by you real quick (laughs) last podcast ever (laughs) i love your reaction was so funny 
That reminded me of some bro. shit we would fucking film. Yeah, your oh, funeral. Let's do it. We're going to jump by you real quick. <laughs> Dog, that would have been on a video oh for sure. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on. Look, so seriously. Yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. thinking about this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Jacob, we talked about this the other day. Can't wait. With, with Josh. Is this an acceptable joke? <laughs> See, already, okay. already you're in a good place because you're like, look, I'm unsure of where the boundaries yeah, yeah, are. So okay. it's, you know, go I, ahead. Okay. So there was a few iterations of this, but I, we landed on this one. I thought this was the most acceptable. Okay. So I just opened a new gym uh -huh. in LA. It's an Encino. Come by, check it out. And I was thinking it'd be really funny if I was like, hey guys, I'm getting on my story. And I go like, you know, I realized, um, I want to let all hot chicks in for free. Okay. Is that Okay. Or can I say, and then do we, do we, so the iteration of this that got really bad was like, we were talking about judging the girls out of like their number, like, like, are they a 10? Are they, eight? you got to be an eight or above. That's when I was like, we were, we're crossing the line. We're not doing that. That's wrong. Right. But what if I, he said, right. With a question mark. Too. No, no, that's wrong. <laughs> no, I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. Right. Be like, you're, we're going to have like people at the front being like, nah, she's a seven. Get out of here. Yeah. That's fucked up. But can I, so I was honestly debating this. I was like, this is really funny to me. Genuinely funny. If I just put on my story and I was like, you know what? I think for this whole month, I'm going to let hot girls in the gym for free. Mm -hmm. I think that's hilarious. Okay. But I already know that I'm going to say something like that. And people are going to be like, wow, bro, that's super fucked up. Like, I feel like I'm going to run into that. Well, yes. I, 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 it's a bad idea. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I guess like, where, where where's the joke? What's the joke? Yeah, you're right. The joke was because it's just to, it's just kind of to prod people to be you're mad. Ju you're just being controversial. Yeah. And if that's what you want, go for it. But then yeah. you're inviting all the Doesn't negative. Doesn't that sound yeah. cool, though? A gym with just hot girls. It's a in club. It? Yeah. That's a club. It's a club. Yeah. Yeah. It's they, a gym club club. It's a, there you go. Yeah. So it's like win win. So now, so what you, what you have now is an idea and a problem. Yes. And you got to try to solve it. And here, like, and here are the yeah, things. How that do come. we make it a joke? That's, this would be like, if you could figure this out, live action. The joke, as we're the doing joke this? in it is actually making fun of clubs. That's okay. the joke. Where okay. it's like, pe places do this in real life and it's acceptable. So the joke yes. is like, clubs do this. So that's, that's where it's like you're making relations and connections and metaphors. And it's like, I'm no longer making fun of ugly girls, which is what you're doing if you say only hot well, girls. Well, that's why I said we're not. Exactly. Yeah, so that's bad. where I said, where's the joke? In that, the joke is on the ugly girls, which is like not cool. Like yes. it's just not. And it's like, that's really cute. See, Jacob, I told yeah. you it's not cool, dude. See, and it's like, you well, can't. I told you, Jacob. <laughs> I told you, Jacob. But that's an example of people being like, oh, you can't say anything anymore. It's like, you're, you're complaining that you're going to get a reaction for something. You could say whatever the fuck you want. You can't complain that people are going to get upset yeah, by it. For sure. Go ahead and say it. But So, like, so yeah. we make it into a joke related to the club. Right. And there's still some like, you know, a dance you're going to have to do to like avoid the, the joke's going to constantly be going to this direction of like, it's going to be offending the wrong people and you got to reel it back in and remind yourself of what the joke really is. The joke is on the clubs and people doing this in different settings where it's like socially acceptable. So acceptable. Right. And then all of a sudden you have uh, people aren't mad at you for, you know, just judging the attractiveness of women. Well, I didn't want to do that. I was right. going to no, say, I, yeah, yeah. I was going to say like, listen, if you, if you, if you think you're a hot chick to show up, you know, I didn't, it wasn't right. But it it's was like, like, it doesn't, the, un, you, what you intend and what you do are two different things. Of course. Right. So like now it's like, you have to make your intent super clear. And that's what I was saying with comedy. It's like yeah. with, with things being like landmines everywhere, you have to know where they are and it doesn't do you any good to be, to complain about where they are. Yeah, like it. they're there, deal with it. Like figure out how to make your comedy work. And so that joke can work if you are making a, an observation to something else where it's like, you're actually now speaking on something that is more positive where you're like calling out other places that do this, where it's socially acceptable. Like, why is this acceptable? Why is this acceptable here and not in the gym? And you're now making a connection that's actually progressive instead of just offensive. All right, guys, quick interruption from the podcast. Check this out. One of our sponsors, Liquid IV. Now, if you guys do not understand how important it is to be hydrated, like not only for your mental health, not only for your mind so you could think better, but also for your muscles and for your body, for your performance, for everything. I really just want to tell you guys this first. People do not understand, like we as like an entire human race are just like constantly, for the most part, dehydrated. Every time I always feel my best, I am hydrated. Yes, 
I know, crazy thought, right? Because the body's made up of so much water, but it's so important now. The reason why liquid IV is so dope is because obviously it tastes amazing. It's super easy to blend. It's not, it doesn't get thick. It, it doesn't, you know, and there's never any funny business with that. Flavors are amazing, packed with vitamins, packed with minerals, everything you need. My favorite part of it, honestly, pre-workout, two of them, get the sodium levels up, pump, crazy. Drink enough water, like two with like, it says a 16 ounce per like each one. But if you did like two, 36, 42 ounces, and then like kept drinking a ton of water, you're going to have like honestly amazing pumps because I uh, people people actually underestimate how important sodium is for uh, pumps and for muscle contraction as well so all right so if you guys want to pick up liquid IV you can get it at bulk at Costco or you can go to liquidiv.com slash raw talk and get 20% off your order right now again that's liquidiv.com slash raw talk tons of dope flavors actually a few different products as well there's like energy formulas as well but if you want it liquidiv.com slash raw talk support your boy let's get back into this podcast wow yeah damn yeah zoo culture club yeah come by i'll send you a bill for that one <laughs> yeah no dude real time that was sick in real time it was a joke by the way i would never do something like that yeah. so crazy uh, this is how it's silly i would never say that i was never gonna put that on my story yesterday <laughs> <laughs> you're like deleting <laughs> deleting it on your story as we speak <laughs> yeah holy shit i uh, didn't have that in my drafts so uh, what? what the fuck what? me no dude no. i would never do that joke is all girls are hot <laughs> That's another way of doing it too. Like you show up and it's like, everybody's beautiful. You know what oh I mean? Like you're beautiful God. for this reason. It's like you spin it on its head. Well, that's know? what I was kind of saying was like, you know, if, if all the girls show up, then it's like, yo, if they own their shit, they own their shit. Yeah. Cause I'm not going to be like, you're not, you're not. I was never going to do that. And that's what you'd have to do. Like, again, like understanding where the pitfalls are, know how to get to them before your audience does. So if yeah. that's your joke at the end of the day, like all hot girls get in for free. And then you immediately have to follow it with showing the results that like everybody gets in and it's like everybody's beautiful type shit, you know, where it's basically like, all girls for free. Yeah. 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 And then you're going to be guys. Like, Ooh, what about guys for free? Like, shut up, pussy. It's like, but see, but that, so, we just yeah. be mean to guys. You see? Yeah, man. It's never it's ending. Crazy. It's never ending. Yeah. Fuck. I could be mean to guys. And it's like, yeah, that's good yeah. though. Fuck Com those guys. Comedy. You, yeah. <laughs> Dude, what? Fun. It's, it's weird. Like there's a double standard in everything, but it's like also just, that's, just what it is, I guess. Yeah, man. I guess, like I said, you, you can complain about it or you can just figure out how to find harmony with it. Yeah. Yeah. So Club Zoo, um, if you guys want to come, uh, Hot Girls for free. Uh, See, I could say it in character. You could. You should. Yeah. You should. We can sound bite that. All right. Yeah, tell them. So this is from the professor himself. All right. So Bradley Martin told me that he had this super sick idea, very progressive. Uh, all hot girls, and we're talking nines and above i was gonna say eights but like that's a b that's a b we're that's going nines i'm an a student man okay I'm, I'm all right a all student. right uh you get in for free okay for for the uh for two months yeah and i'll be judging and uh you know we have to go on a date um obviously and we have to have, be in like a, a committed relationship on your side of course uh me i have <laughs> i have plenty of other contestants to to field so like and then at the end of this but she's got to be loyal yes 100 percent, dude come on Okay. That's obvious. Okay. So she's got to be loyal. Yeah, and me, I'm a man. Oh, it's also because you have a so lot of... I have to spread my seed. It's what, you know, evolution. Got it. Evolution. You've been watching Andrew Tate. Um, I've been watching the, uh, nature documentaries, dude. You nature? ever seen nature? Yeah. Animals are dickheads, bro. Sure. Animals, everyone's like, oh, nature is so humble. Animals are dickheads. It's true. It's yeah, one time I was watching, tangent here, okay, I was watching uh, Discovery Channel. People are like, we should be more like animals. You're so cute, compassionate. There was a pot of whales that were chasing down. Pot of whales? Whales, big ass whales, right? They were chasing down mm. this mother whale and they wanted, to, they wanted to kill the baby so they could rape the mom. And I'm like, nature. Is that real? Yeah, dude. Fucking Discovery Channel. And the guys are taking a British action. They're going to kill the baby and then they're going to, you know, basically like, you know, procreate with the mom. And I'm like, I think I lost the plot with the character here. But <laughs> yo, yo. It's just like, yeah. anyway, so show up in zoo culture. It's going to yeah. be super weird. Whales and shit. We yeah. <laughs> got no. whales. Dude, yeah. you know what's really funny? What's remember that? that one time we, uh, this is, I don't know if you remember this, but I'll never forget this moment. Like, I think I cried, <laughs> cried, like literally in tears we were at your house we were watching triple x <laughs> yes. we were watching yes. triple x yeah oh bro <laughs> and the guy pulls out a rocket launcher we were high yeah we were high as shit we were high as fuck okay this guy pulls out a rocket launcher and i swear to god i'm watching it i'm so high and i'm watching it i'm like pause it 
I'm like, that is a fucking, he had a VCR. <laughs> a camcorder. A camcorder, like a VCR camcorder, like you would record. And it was like attached to like some like plastic shit. I'll never forget that moment, man. Cause I swear I paused it. We looked at this. I, I was literally in tears. The whole movie was hilarious watching it through like that like, lens. You were just like, it was, cause at that line, he was like, Oh, is that, you're going to use a bazooka? He's like, not a bazooka, a heat seeker, or like whatever. And then he pulls out a spray-painted PVC pipe, yeah. green, spray-painted yeah. green, glued to a, a camcorder. Literally. And it had, it like, the screen open, like, you know, the whatever, the yes. tracking system. And you could see the play buttons. I was like, dude, I had that camera. Yeah. I was Fucking crying. crazy. I'll never forget that moment, man. What, why did we decide to get super high and watch that movie? Uh, we Maybe, we, I think we were shooting YouTube blog. <laughs> Oh, shit. Hey, you know, we're throwing fucking spaghetti at the wall and seeing what's stuck. Fuck, man. Yeah. That was one of the funniest moments in my life. Dude, that shit was... That whole movie was hilarious. It's weird. If, yeah, when you watch it, like, not like it's an action movie, but watch yeah. it, like, you're intent to laugh. Yeah, it's And, the bro, there's thing. so many... I don't know why that one specifically. Vin Diesel or some shit just... A triple X, man. It, yeah. What a beautiful movie. But that was one of the funniest moments in my life. Like, no, yeah, that no was bullshit. Good, that was a good one. What about uh, what about Bros Verse stuff? What what do you remember from those videos? What was what was your favorite video? The wine tasting one. Oh, that my shit God. was so. I see clips shit. of that still. What's that? I see clips on TikTok. Oh, yeah, because people will rip my shit and put it all over. Yeah. Um, How's that feel? It's good. No, it's good. But it's, they're just they'll just yeah. put the content. It's yeah. not so much steal yeah. it. They yeah. just like repurpose it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. They're posting it. TikTok's yeah. like meant for that now. Yeah, I know. That's that was one of the honestly also just one of the funnest days. Just yeah, outside of even filming, there was so it was so much fun. Like those girls were really there. We really yeah, like, we were, like, we were able to hit on them and, and like the whole character thing. That shit was so funny. There's that it, fucking. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that yeah. giraffe with the fucking tongue. They're like saying the adjectives describing the wine. That was we were fucking cracking up. Oh, yeah, at the end because we were doing like. If you haven't seen the video, we were, we were talking about how like douchebags with wine. This is always, bros versus wine tasting. Yeah. yeah. And so they, like people always are like trying to sound so sophisticated, just saying adjectives. I'm like, we got to say adjectives that don't make any sense. Yo. Like just any adjective. And we're like, this, this wine is very, what was the shit we were saying, bro? Bro, do you still have that? Rustic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you still have that content? Yeah. Like raw content. Yeah. Because bro, the, I remember we sat there, we were dying well i upload the the outtakes and stuff and they're fucking hilarious is it the, still up there yeah the outtakes oh the God. outtakes are so funny because you see us just like losing our shit constantly like it's so funny yeah that's uh, that's uh, that's why i think the content was so fun to film because it was like legit funny like yeah, that was all improv so like yeah, yeah bros bro science is scripted and then i add improv bros verse was like come up with an idea get in the situation and then just wing it i was just in character for the entire time yeah wing it yeah that was fun man it was a good time oh that yeah okay the okay i remember the pokemon go one was really fun pokemon go was fun too and um, then the ninja warrior was fun but pokemon go was probably one of my funnest because we we drove around the, on those fucking buggies the motorized coolers yeah. oh my god that was a good one um the drinking games one was fun yeah, yeah. that was one of the earlier ones right uh the pokemon go was one of the earlier ones drinking games was like earlier for like the relaunch of it you know what's funny the one of the funniest things about all this content when i look back at it um the bros verse stuff and just the dom is any stuff with me in general. It's funny because people now today would have seen obviously before he got ripped off of YouTube, but Steve will do it. Um, it's the same dynamic. Mm -hmm. It was the same dynamic of like Dom was Steve and I was I. Yeah. Right. And then, and then it, the, it's just so funny how like for some reason that kind of character for me always just seemed to hit. Well, like, why do you think I was always the guy that got made fun of? Here's why it worked for bros verse, right? And like, this goes back to like understanding who you're making fun of. Like the dynamic between Dom and you was always this like, and it's, it's, it started from that video of gym nemesis. Like Dom yeah. thinks he's bigger than you. And it's because he's so insecure that like he, he needs to just like belittle you as a person to like, you know, that to just feel bigger. And like, that's yeah. most people. It's like bullies. Right. Right. And so it worked with you as like a big person to be the, like the, the punching bag for somebody like Dom, where if you were my size, smaller or whatever, and this is not me admitting to being smaller than you, this is just in theory. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Can't break, <clears throat> can't break the character. Okay. But then it would just be, Dom would just be an asshole, like just a dickhead to somebody who like doesn't, who can't take it. And there's no like understanding as to why, like if it was just somebody else, like I'd just be a prick. And it's like, you can't, there's nothing endearing about that. Like seeing Dom think he's bigger than you all the time and like constantly having to like outflex you and just like be a dick. And it's because 
he, we're, we're making fun of people who, who act like that in real life. That yeah. like, he needs to fluff themselves up. And it's like, that's why it worked. Cause it's just like this odd pairing where, you know, the bully is the smaller one. Yeah. And that's why that works. And that's why it, it helps. But like, you know, your character of just being very, just like in the, like, like, it's almost like, why are you here? <laughs> and like, why are you putting up with it? And you're just like, yeah, okay. I just go along with it. And it just like fucking worked. <laughs> Bro. It was so funny, man. Yeah. Comedy. <clears throat> I've always like, I've always had that fucking, I don't know, dude, whatever. Took a lot of shit over the years, man. Took a lot of bullying over you the years. You did. You did take a lot of bullying. It's crazy. How did, how did that affect you? I think people got too used to trying to bully me, man. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay. I definitely had a hand in that. It's okay. <laughs> I've, I mean, dude, I, I, I know what it is. I mean, the whole time I've always known it was a joke. Um, I think it was more funny with the Steve stuff because the Steve stuff, there was less. I feel like there was less of a line of a joke. Became almost more real. Yeah, sometimes I don't know what, what's a joke. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like for, I think there are actually people who think I'm a drug dealer or sold drugs or was a drug yeah. dealer. Like I think there's probably people who really believe that. And that's is, I didn't want that to ever be the case with bro side with bros verse, which is like the joke is clear that Dom is bigger than Brad, and it's like we know that's a joke. Yeah. Like, and I wanted to be like, what we're joking about is just kind of like we know it's there's a line. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, dude, the, the internet in general has just been obviously a massive gift for me. It's just, it's, I think the hardest learning point for me is like just the, I don't know, my, my way to navigate through it all. And like, honestly, just, I don't know. I think I spent so much time <clears throat> focused on work and business and content and like producing and like showing up and showing up and showing up that like, I, I didn't like until, you know, the last year of my life or the last two years of my life started showing up for myself more. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I really like struggled with, like, and my ability to like fully show up for myself, how I should be so that I can like just genuinely be happy outside of all this shit, right? Having all this shit is cool and having all this shit is fun. But I, I think I struggled for a long time with just like genuine happiness in, in like relation to it all. Like obviously from the outside looking in, it could see like, oh, this guy has all this shit. But like I, I spent so much time in my life. Like you were talking about your, your, your 20s, like literally my entire 20s, I like say it's from 23 to on. I was like trying to be on the internet and trying to like succeed on the internet <clears throat> and then trying to make content. And you're trying to like, make all this stuff essentially for other people to get something from obviously there's so much that comes back to me but it was always like i always knew because of the fickleness in it and the fragileness of it you always had to keep going and i spent so much time going forward and going forward that like i you know i, I had way less time in my own personal life to like look and be like well, what's happening here and why did i do this and why am i in this situation and how did i find myself here and I've just been doing a lot more of that now lately, which is why, like I started this pod saying like, you know, I'm sorry for the way that this was with me and you, because it was, it was, that was another version of something where I was like, have to go forward, have to do this, have to keep doing that because if I don't, I lose it all. You know, yeah. that's why I asked you that question earlier, yeah. but I've definitely come to a point in my life now where I'm just like, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> often, often by force, I guess I, I feel like I learn lessons that you know, I should have learned or I could have learned. It just wasn't in my time to do it at the right time yeah. when I really wish it could have happened. Cause now I find myself in situations just older being like, man, I wish I did this or I wish I said that. And it's like, okay, now I know what am I going to do different moving forward? So, yeah. um, I guess to say all that, I got a question for you in regards to that in your personal life stuff have, you know, you don't have to give crazy detail or anything, but has, has the internet and being on the internet, um, has it taught you anything significant about like, how you show up in relationships, friendships, business, like has it taught you anything that you didn't already know or? I don't know, I think I've always had a good balance with it all. Like, remember we had this talk a little bit ago cause like I had seen that in you where it's like, I know like you are so focused on what you feel you need to do for like self-preservation that sometimes you don't see like what you're doing and on the way there. Yeah. And like, I was like, you're going to hit this, po this point where you're like, my personal life has been neglected. My relationships have maybe been damaged or also neglected. And then you're going to find this, this moment of like, shit, like, what's it all worth if I have all these things, but I don't have these things that are important to me. Yeah. And like, there's, there's always a balance. Like sometimes I'm a little bit too like in the moment of like, this is what, um, what I feel I want to do or what makes me happy. And, and it kind of puts me in this cycle maybe of like, not doing enough in, in the, the career side to like get me to that next level of comfort. Like I'm, you got to sacrifice one thing for the other in, in some respects, but I've always known that like, 
how I make my money is more important to me than how much I make. And so like whatever it is I'm doing along the way, like how much success or fame or money I make, like I want to make sure I'm enjoying what I'm doing and I'm feeling fulfilled. Cause like I started this not, this is before the idea of internet fame was like really a thing. Like yeah. I started it being like, I want to do this, like create comedy to all this stuff to live life. How I want to live it, to spend my days doing what I want to do. And that looks different for me all the time. But like, it usually means like enjoying time with friends and like loved ones and like going on adventures and like creating stuff and sharing things I'm passionate about. So <clears throat> I've always kept that in mind with what I do. And my struggle is sometimes needing to like step a little bit away from that to, to put the focus on, on things where it's like, I'm going to do some things I don't want to do to get to the next place where it's going to make all these things better. So it's sort of like the reverse of what you do. And I think like we're always trying to seek that balance and like, it's, it's, you know, really cool to hear, you know, the journey and, and where you, you've landed at and like proud of you for realizing those things. Cause like, you know, obviously I'm glad, you know, our friendship is kind of, you know, back here talking about bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I think that's really important. Like the YouTube stuff, man, and, and the internet and the success, it's like, I love it for what it has afforded me to do with my life and the connections I've made and the people. So it's, I've always just kept that in mind. And I think like, I, I don't, I don't see beyond that. I don't see like this thing, this giant, like reach I have. It's just like, I'm just making my stuff and people like it. And I just connect with people. Yeah. And that's just always been like my main focus of just like connection and enjoyment. And it's helped me kind of like stay grounded, I think. So I think it, in, in a way it just helps me like it, re-solidified that priority in my life. Like the bigger I got and the more success I had, I never lost that. So I was like, yeah, that's really what is important to me. Yeah. Yeah. I dude, I, I fucking get it. I mean, that's the thing. Like, <clears throat> it's not as if like, I've never thought that all the stuff, I mean, I've known that the stuff that's really important is just everything outside of that. I guess I just, I always had this, at least when it started to get bigger, I had this like sense that I have to keep going no matter what, because then, you know, there was like more people who started to rely on me more people who started to like, you know, like for, for income and all this kind of shit that I was yeah. like, damn, I have this like actual sense of like, I need to make sure this shit goes forward. Cause it's not just me. It's a lot of people now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I just sometimes, like you said, the balancing act of it at all is, I mean, I guess there's no exact right way to do this, but it, it is just about learning and trying to be able to take inventory enough along the way to go. Okay. Well, like, am I happy ultimately in these moments? Cause if I'm not eventually like this shit's going to crash and burn if I can't be happy in it. Yeah. You know? And like also all you really have is this very moment, like this time, like we're trying to get somewhere and yeah, it's, it's important to have your goals and where you want to go, but like you got to enjoy it along the way too. You got to make yeah. sure that like it's all worth something. Cause like you might never get there. Like whether it's like you, you know, you don't survive until there or like yeah. your business doesn't, or it goes a different direction. Like, you know, you want to, I just feel like personally, I want to make sure I'm, I'm enjoying the journey as, along with it and still yeah. like being responsible and, and, you know, having the foresight to, to move forward. But yeah, you know, I just want to, want to make sure I'm, I'm enjoying every minute of it I can. You know, I just yeah. want to have fun. Did you, did you like, <clears throat> was there any times in your, in your journey or to this point where you like lost more sight of that? Like where you had to like bring yourself back to be like, okay, what's actually going on? What really matters? Like, had you ever? Yeah. Um, when, when I was doing NARPM, um, it's when it started, it was a huge hit. Right. And it was great for me to see the people like really love something outside of bro science. And then 2016 adpocalypse, YouTube out, al YouTube algorithm changed everything. And overnight we were getting a channel, my channel, like 50,000 subs. And we were getting like 250,000 views a video overnight, 30,000 views. Yeah. I remember and we're like, what the fuck is this about? Then you have to try to like keep up with the algorithm. And we're like, oh, I just got to make a video every week. And I was spending a lot of money, putting a lot of strain on my friendships, like with Zach and, and my relationships just to like really push this thing off the ground because it meant so much to me. And looking back, all I ended up doing, like I created great stuff and I love all the things we did. But if I had the foresight to know that we were never going to beat the algorithm, I would have just like eased up and done it in a way that's like, let's just enjoy this. Let's just let it last and like not make it so important because that to me was like, my escape, my way out, my, like my, the new thing. And it, it meant so much that like, I was like not being a great friend to Zach. Like we were butting heads. Like I was just like so uptight and like, you know, we were working together and, and it, it was like, we were enjoying it, but we were just under so much 
stress to get these things produced at like TV quality level under like no financing, just all of my money. Yeah. And there, there was a moment where I had to like step back and be like this, as fun as this is and important as it is, as it is, I lost what was why I started it yeah. was like the pure enjoyment and like self discovery of it because I just needed it to be successful. And now revisiting it, like we are trying to do it again, but we want to make it work where it's like, let's not lose the the plot here of this is for like the p- whole point of that show is like, how can you get the most out of life? How can you enjoy like every last bit of it and like really s- do the things that scare you? And in, and I want to like get, get back to that. And there was a time when I, it was so important to me that like I lost sight of that very thing that started it. You know, it's cool hearing you talk about like that for me, the, that's the podcast. This for me is like yeah. the thing that I just love doing. Cause I, I genuinely like I'm trying to understand people because like I'm trying to fucking understand myself still. Yeah. You know, I'm still trying to learn. I'm still trying to grow. I think having conversations with people about anything and, and whatever's important and whatever they've accomplished. And it's just such a cool thing for me. And, and that's why I love this so much. And that's yeah. why it's so easy and seamless for me. Like I don't fucking there's no script. There's no anything. I just I know enough about you to ask the kind of questions that I'm just really curious. in. Mm. And obviously, like we've had enough experience and time together for me to 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 create these sort of questions just based on what I'm interested in, in you and what you've done and, and, you know, how you move through the world and, you know, your experiences. And I'm just grateful that I have this platform to do this on. Um, and I, I hope you do really pursue that because I know how much that meant to you. And I, I remember that. I remember that those moments specifically on YouTube and how it's just like, it just feels like it just, they, they, YouTube legit pulled the rug under everyone. It was it like, did, <clears throat> man. yeah, this is, it was like, it went from content that could be like, I remember that too for me where I was like, I remember it went from like same similar thing, 200, 300,000 to like a hundred. And I was like, wait, the next day, like everyone mm-hmm. was just like, no. And then the next day, the same thing. The next day, the same thing. I was like, it never came back. Yeah. It, it made was certain just, content impossible to produce. Yeah. And, and then it favored the whole like, uh, you know, family friendly and then family channels were blowing up and all this. Like, I remember that's when Austin McBroom and all this shit blew mm-hmm. up. And it's just like, damn, like it's no matter what you put into it, because you were putting your heart and soul into that, that um, the car stuff. I remember that. I remember we filmed the video. Yeah. One of the honestly, one of the. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was crazy. <laughs> one of the craziest. They <laughs> okay, <this> <laughs> <laughs> I just can't even talk. That was so oh, fucking ridiculous. Oh. Yeah. That's one of the, that was the top. Uh, one of the top, yeah. Anyways, but I can't yeah. even talk. It's just so. It's I can't even share this story. It's yeah. so fun. Maybe someday yeah. in the fucking, you know, on the deathbed or something like that. But, bro, that was really funny, man. I'll never forget. You, you, I just I'm not gonna tell the story, but I'm just gonna say my reaction. I remember I remember turning, and and I was just like, I, you uh you like stood up, and I was like, oh he's good, and then I turned and I wa- I like tried to walk the other way because I was like. I didn't know how to react to this situation. I was so like, I'm sorry, I have no context here, but I was so like weirdly like, it wasn't funny, but I had no other reaction. Yeah, we have it on tape and you were like holding back laughter. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. I didn't know how to react, dude. I was so awkwardly like, holy shit. Oh my God. I'll never forget that. Uh, I had to walk away. Yo, it was like, yeah, sorry. That was, wow. One of the funniest moments ever. Yeah, man. an RPM, man. What a, what a, what a shit show. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, fuck. Yeah. It's racing my G-Wagon. But yeah, man, it is, it, I, I knew how much that meant to you. And it was just a crazy time to see how like the platform itself was just like, nah, good luck, guys. Yeah. Um, and that sucked. I, 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 I don't know. I, because YouTube has changed so much over the years. Like, and I, I don't know. I feel like YouTube like just at times just favors c- certain creators almost, yeah. it seems like. Yeah. And then. And then it doesn't, or it does, and it's it's just a weird space. Yeah, man. A super weird space. Um, have you ever seen yourself going outside of it or doing other content anywhere else? Uh, I mean, the whole, the whole point of what I was doing was to, like, make uh, a TV show in Hollywood yeah. and all this. And, like, that was why I never saw YouTube as a home. It was, like, a stepping stone to get somewhere else. Um, and then, you know, we the whole gym pilot with the rocks production company. Yeah, I remember they, like, that. they like gutted it and I was like, Oh, maybe this isn't the place. I for talked me. about that a few times on podcast. Yeah. Too. And I was just like, you know what? Like I've been so focused on this goal of like, get away from YouTube, get away from the internet, go to Hollywood, achieve my big dream. And like, there's still part of me that like feels like I want to make something that big and grand. The other part of me is like, 
damn, I've ha- I have it good here. Like I create what I want to create. Yeah. I answer to nobody but myself. And like, yeah, it comes with the stress. And like, sometimes I feel like there's so much potential in what I do that it just ha- that hasn't been reached. But I'm like, you know what? It's, it's always leading me somewhere new, like the clothing brand. Like that's, yeah. I would have never thought this is where I was going to end up. And I absolutely love it. It takes everything I love about all the things I do, roll it into one thing that like I, I'm still in the driver's seat for. And that like, I am the one monetizing, you know, no one's cutting me a check where yeah. it's like, you know, big fat Hollywood checks would be nice, but yeah, you know, it's still, you got to answer to somebody. And we did that for a moment and it was just like, this sucks. Yeah. You would have yeah. hated your fucking life. Yeah, bro. That. I'm like, I'm glad it didn't work out. I'm yeah. glad. I, but at that time, man, shit was falling apart. Yeah. You were yeah. crushed, huh? Yeah. It was a, 2017 was a very bad year for me. Yeah. yeah As I like just back to rebuilding, but yeah. But that's what this is, man. Yeah. That's what all this is in life is like, it's just recognizing where you're at, where you want to go and being able to like deal with the shit you've been through and like trying to make it better moving forward. That's like, yeah. I just keep coming to that realization yeah. no matter what, like whether it be like relationship stuff, business stuff, whatever, it's just like, can it become better though? And are you willing to do the work? That's all it comes yeah, down man. to. So I'm do willing to do the forward. work, man. Yeah. Straight up. I like it forever. Like Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. But I appreciate you coming on. Uh, it's a blessing. It's an honor. Someone that I made content with for years, someone who, you know, I did a pod with, uh, with Kyle, uh, I gave him, gave him love obviously. Cause you know, he's been such a big part of like, my, you know, my career, my business as well. Um, uh, but you have been a person like that for me. Who's, who had a massive part in, uh, YouTube, my presence on YouTube and all the content that we made all over the years. So I want to make sure people know that as well, that I really appreciate you being that and, uh, being a, being a real friend. And I know we had our moments, but I appreciate, you know, you being here and being willing to like do this and, and conversate and talk about it and, and everything, man. I, th- I think you're a great person and, and you deserve all the success that you have. Thanks, man. So, yeah. It means a lot. I'm, I'm really happy we got to do this. Yeah. And like, we needed it. Said, yeah, we did, man. And we, we, we've done some awesome shit over the years. And, yeah. you know, this is cool. It feels good. Yeah. Because I'll man. never forget. Yeah, you deserve right. it. You, I'll never forget. Uh, I don't know what videos it was. The first videos in, uh, I think, with Barbell Brigade. Yeah. And uh, that was like, that was, I don't know. That was, that was like, not to be, because I had done a bunch of shit leading up to that point. But that's when, like, shit started to kind of take a different life. You mm-hmm. know, and shit started to, like, really, like. The gym nemesis video. Yeah, yeah. this is literally yeah. it. Yeah. Gym nemesis. So you guys want to check out some of the content. Uh, the Bros vs. Channel is still up. There's still content there. Um, definitely check out the wine tour outtakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go watch that now. I'm yeah, not even kidding. That's just too funny. That was uh, the end of that video. We were sitting on that brown table, right? Yeah. We were on a table. Yeah, yeah. And we were like going like this with the wine. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. That was one of the funniest things in, in life, man. So... <laughs> Um, I've had some of the best laughs in the world with you, man. I appreciate you. I'm, I'm glad that, that you came on the show. Um, where can they find you and find all your stuff and support you? Uh, yeah. So bro science, my main YouTube channel. I've got my other channel with NARPM. It's just my name, Mike Tornabeni, yeah. uh, Dom is Instagram, Mike Tornabeni, Instagram. Yeah, I got a lot of personalities. I got to juggle here. And then my main focus right now is shell corp, my new clothing brand. So the shell Um, yeah, we're coming out with different drops. It's like, Dress wear meets street wear. Yeah. You know, trying to get people. Yeah, it's a vibe. It's dope, man. It's unique as fuck. That's for sure. I love it, man. Yeah. Some people rip your style off, but, you know, that's another conversation for another day. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn the post notifications on. We're on iTunes. I think we're on Spotify. Yes, we're on Spotify. Um, but, yeah, if you want to just listen on audio, audio only, go check it out. I love you guys. Appreciate all the support. We're out of here. I think Mike has to go watch the Super Bowl. New videos every week. Yeah, no. That's you not. Cut that off. Yeah, that's, see, no, no new videos. Are you done though? Well, what's this? What's this? What's the deal with that? For real, actually. Uh, I, I I'm gonna make a few more. Uh, okay. But yeah, I because I, I want... you can't just be done. Like you have to do a sit. Like a I don't know. Like I don't know what what the plan is. But like I I am stepping away from making. You know. I know, but yeah. like what I'm saying is that's I, this is like we got to make sure this stays in the pot is. At some point, if you truly decide to stop being dumb, yeah. What do you, I do? You have to do some sort of funeral. Yeah, I, I'm not kidding. No, I know. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, I'll do the eulogy, dog. I have bro, to be there. Bro, I know. I, that I video will about, go fucking hard. I was dog. actually thinking about making a video, uh, like a vlog video, just titled uh, Faking My Death to See Who Cares. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. No, I'm not kidding, though. Like, Dom is Eddie. Like, if you stop him, he yeah. has to die. He's got Yeah, he's got to have a funeral. Yes, I've bro. thought about it. Before. That would be hilarious. Yeah, that is would be one of the funniest videos ever. Yeah, but it's like it's so funny because it'd be so dumb to be like, 
he he's got like a fake body in the thing and right. he's and he's outside like and the getting funeral. people to give him compliments yeah. and shit. He's a pretty good <laughs> guy. I, I wanted to hear what they say be, about me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like be disguised as someone else. <laughs> be disguised as a guy. Dog, I swear to God. I, I swear to God, I've been thinking about this. Yeah. See? That's that's why we always make good content though. Because this is how Bros Verse started. Yeah, so we do more Bros Verse then? Fuck, dude. I'll do it. Shit. Bring it back one time. Damn. I'm just saying, like, really mean this. I really mean this. If Dom stops making content, he has to have a funeral. Got to have a funeral. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like you did. You can't just stop. It'd be no. really weird. Like yeah. you, would, you'd really miss out on like such a like a, a cool moment to to really see myself die. Fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah, weird. dude. Honestly, anyways, subscribe to the channel. Um, maybe maybe a bros verse. Who knows? We'll see. But that is that's that's that'd be timeless, dude. Yeah, let's get out of here. All right.